Hey everybody, how are you all doing out there? It's me, Eric Conley, the Gary County 4-H Youth Development Agent, and this is On the Ground with Eric Conley. These are segments, and I haven't done as many recently as I really wanted to. I've, you know, had other things that I've been required to do. So, uh, but I've been doing these, um, uh, these On the Ground segments throughout the entire spring to kind of showcase some of the beautiful wildflowers that we have here in Kentucky and talk about some of the uh, just uh, amazing places uh, that we have here in Kentucky. So um, so I hope that you are enjoying them. Uh, I'm going to try and get to more as things are starting to come into bloom. And, and uh, so we're seeing that transitional period between spring and summer. We're starting to see some different things. So I'm really excited about getting out and showing you all a few more things. So I wanted to do this one. This will probably be the last lady slipper that I get the chance to do. Uh, this is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, now there's one other one that I have not seen in Kentucky, which is, well, two other ones, actually, the, the uh, uh, small yellow lady slipper. Uh, and, and then of course the white lady slipper, which is Cypripedium candidum. Uh, I have not seen either one uh, of those. I, I know that, uh, the small yellow lady slipper, I, I have a pretty good idea of where those are, but, uh, as far as the white lady slipper, I have no idea. And those places are protected by, you know, our state nature preserves and, uh, or they may be on private land, but that private landowner protects those species. There's a ton of, not just orchids and not just lady slippers, obviously, but there's a ton of plants and a ton of uh, unique habitats that are protected by private citizens or uh, by agencies that want to make sure that we have these things in place, not only for, you know, what our, our current population, but definitely for future generations as well. So this one is by far my favorite, okay? I love the yellow lady slippers and love the pink lady slippers, um, but this one is by far my favorite. This is Kentucky lady slipper. It's also called Southern lady slipper. And uh, this one actually uh, became its own separate species not too terribly long ago. Uh, for a long time, uh, this one was kind of clumped in with uh, yellow lady slippers or uh, Cypripedium, uh, I think at the time, Calceolus or now Parviflorum. But this one at one time was actually kind of lumped in with that whole group. Uh, but you can see, and I'll put up pictures with this post, I'll put up pictures of them side by side so that you can see the differences between. But this is, uh, if you if you look at the flower, if you see the, the color of it, the shape of it, the size of it, all of these things are just absolutely different. And so, um, so anyway, so this one is uh, in the family Orchidaceae, of course, and then uh, the um, and you can hear you can you can hear how close to the road I am on this particular one. So hold on one second, I'm gonna let the car go past. And so this one. So this particular plant uh, is Cypripedium Kentucky NC, okay? And uh, a fairly standard as far as floral shape is concerned when we get into things like, uh, when we get into the lady slippers, okay? So, uh, you know, uh, obviously it's uh, it's a monocot, so we have uh, just a, one of the, the identifiers of monocots is typically they have this kind of parallel venation on the leaves, really uh, heavy leaves. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, this big fused petal here called the labellum and uh, the space on the inside of it, you can really see how much space is actually on the inside of this one. Just a, an absolutely gorgeous flower. Um, so, uh, you know, um, insects, so as I've told you all before about when we talk about orchids, we talk about tiny, tiny seeds uh, that uh, really don't have this this outer coating, okay? So uh, without, out, without that outer coating, they do require some help, these fungal relationships, and we've talked about them before, these mycorrhizal relationships that actually allow for uh, orchids to grow by getting, giving them a little bit of density uh, in their um, 
uh, in their seed. So, uh, so they're just like dust. I mean, if you if you ever get orchid seeds on your hand, if you just happen to find one and you see uh, the pod, you can, I mean, if you just tap it, you can see the little dusty seeds that'll end up in your hand. So this one, uh, as far as habitat is concerned, uh, this one likes, uh, typically, I mean, where we, where we find it in Kentucky, uh, it likes, it's very wet soils, uh, typically sandy soils. Um, so, uh, but this one is probably is a lot bigger, uh, than even our large yellow lace slipper. So this one, uh, is a pretty good sized flower that you all see here. Just really gorgeous, a little bit paler than the, the, uh, yellow lady slippers. Um, uh, you can see that it's kind of a pale yellow ish color, but really just gorgeous and will be very tall typically, or at least in my experience have been a lot taller, a lot larger than, uh, than traditional large yellow lady slippers than, uh, Cypripedium parviflorum variation pubescens. So just an amazing, amazing flower. I mean, uh, just to be in the presence of this uh, is is really incredible. Uh, lady slippers have a ton of uh, historical medicinal uses and have been used by a number of uh, Native American tribes, including you know Cherokee and Iroquois, uh, and they use them for all kinds of things, antispasmodic. Uh, uh, medicines. I mean, there was a lot of things uh, that they actually use them for. Most of our orchids, and I've told you all this before, most of the orchids that we have in Kentucky are in some level of distinction, meaning that they are of special concern or threatened or endangered. Uh, we have some orchids in Kentucky that are, are uh, extremely rare, even um, on our federally endangered species list. So, um, but, uh, and, and the reason that is, is not necessarily because of, um, well, I mean, partially it is because of, uh, you know, that just the very specificness of where the flower has to grow. And because of that, really it comes down to habitat loss. So, uh, the, the more damage we do to the habitat for these specific plants, uh, the less opportunities these plants have to grow. So, that's really, uh, you know, that's really where, what it comes into. As far as uh, pollination is concerned, insects are required uh, in uh, parts of the, the pollination sequence for, this, uh, for these flowers, but it's not like they fly in and, you know, it, it, it's not like a, a, what we would consider like a, a, a typical pollinator. It's not like a bumblebee or a, a bee flies down, walks around, picks up nectar and flies off. Uh, so uh, it's, not, it's not the same process. I encourage you all to look for and, uh, and document where these species are. It's so important that we, uh, that we uh, you know, have this kind of uh, this, this community of people who are looking out for the best interest of um, not only saving the particular plant, but also saving the habitat that we find these things in. So if you do happen to find any plant that you think, oh, I'm not really sure what this is, there's a ton of resources out there. Uh, like I've talked about before, uh, the State Nature Preserves, the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves, they do a fantastic job of, uh, of helping people out. They do have a Facebook page. There's also the Kentucky Native Plant Society. The University of Kentucky has people. You can reach out to an extension office to which I work for, uh, and they may be able to to either answer the question for you or to put you um, uh, in contact with resources for that. Or if you just happen to be out, you know, there are things that you can use. I mean, I know that we're a tech-based world. Uh, and so if you happen to be out and have your phone, there is the iNaturalist app. And the iNaturalist app is, is fairly easy to use. And, and uh, there's a lot of cool projects on there. And a lot of that information can be very useful to, uh, to documenting species, to collecting information for graduate and postgraduate work. Uh, there's a ton of uses for uh, a lot of those really cool apps. But I really wanted to show you all this one. I'm going to get a few photographs of it, and I'll post the photographs with this post. Uh, but really just really just an amazing flower. So this, like I said, this is Kentucky Lady Slipper or Southern Lady Slipper. Uh, it is, uh, I want to I think this one is, is well, I, I don't think. I know this one is endangered in Kentucky. Uh, we have limited populations of it, um, so 
Uh, so, but anyway, I wanted you all to see this one. I'll try and get a few photographs of it, a little bit more detail so that you all can see some of the specifics about it as far as pubescence uh, and, uh, and scale and those kinds of things and just some of the details uh, as far as the lip is concerned. So I hope that you all are in continuing to enjoy these segments. If you ever have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email address is eric, E-R-I-C dot comly, C-O-M-L-E-Y at U-K-Y dot E-D-U. Uh, or you can reach out to me at the Gary County 4-H Facebook page. Uh, and it, if you are ever just interested in what's going on in 4-H, uh, you can also reach out to me for that. So uh, continue to watch these. There's a lot of cool things that I've been looking for, and I'm, they're just on the cusp of blooming, and I hope that I'll see them soon. So, uh, But anyway, uh, this is uh, Eric Conley with On the Ground and with this beautiful little Kentucky Lady Slipper. Thank you all so much. Mm -hmm.